All right, so here is the numerical example. Um, I'm going to read the question and then take the notes. Um, consider a town where the sole employer, the only employer, is a large mining company. Workers in this town supply their labor according to the following labor supply function. Uh, L equals uh, 9W square, or let's use the X, all right, because that was the notation we used, where X is the number of workers and W is the hourly wage. The mining company produces its output according to the following production function, Y equals um, 90 squared of X plus 300. Okay, where Y is the number of units of output produced and X is the number of workers hired. The mining company sells its output in a competitive market at a price of $10 per unit. So in the competitive market, uh, the $10 per output. Show all your uh, work for the following question. So how many workers? does the mining company hire? So the optimal X, all right, that's part A. What is the wage in this town? So what is W? Um, standard question. And then part C may be a bit challenging. Suppose that the government wants to reduce the unemployment level to zero. I mean, it is asking basically to find the competitive equilibrium uh, output level and competitive equilibrium um, uh, wage level then what should be the minimum wage level exactly? So the question, so this is the point where unemployment will be zero because the supply equals demand. So therefore the question is asking you to calculate the, uh, the competitive equilibrium wage level and the output, um, I'm sorry, the input level. That's it, so that's the question. So all we need here is the, uh, the supply function, which is not linear by the way, it's nine times W square. Um, so this is, by the way, uh, you can sort of write the inverse supply curve, uh, W equals X divided by 9 square root or square root of X divided by 3, all right? And then this is the production function. Remember, this is the F of X. Uh, the, the inverse demand function is not given. Uh, instead, we are given the um, competitive equilibrium price. All right, so let's solve this. Okay, so what is the profit function of the monopsonist? Again, you don't need to memorize the marginal revenues, marginal costs in monopoly, in monopsony. Don't memorize it. All right, just to understand how to set up the profit function uh, for each case. And then the rest is just the standard uh, take derivative, set it equal to zero, solve for it. Okay, so again, do not memorize things. I mean, I don't think that's going to make your life easier. So set up, let's set up the uh, optimization problem. So what is the profit? Remember, revenue minus cost. So what is the revenue in this case? Well, the revenue is, as always, uh, the price times the quantity, right? Uh, the price of the output times the number of output. So what is the price of output? 10. What is, <coughs> sorry, what is the number of output? The notation is, is y, okay. What about the cost? Well, so just write it, 10y minus. The cost is the price of the input, which is given by the, uh, the wage function. So it's um, square root of x divided by three times the number of factors you use, times x. So that's it. That's the, uh, oh, obviously, subject to y equals this function, 90 div uh, squared of x plus 300, all right? So that means the profit function, I just substitute. So whenever I see y, I just plug this term, 10 times this term, that's it. So it's 900 squared of x plus 3,000 minus x squared of x divided by 3, all right? Well, that's it. How do I take the first order condition? This thing is x to the power one half times x. So this is actually equal to x to the power, again, one plus one half. So it's three over two. And this is x to the power one half, right? 
well, I, I prefer to use those uh, because when I take the derivative with respect to x and set it equal to zero, well, the derivative of this term is 900 times the power of x multiplied by x, the power minus one. So one half minus one is minus one half plus the derivative of 3000 is just zero and then minus the derivative of this term, which is x to the power of three over two. So first off, one third, right? Uh, it's a constant. Then the power of x, three over two, times x to the power minus one. Uh, so three over two minus one is just one over two. S is equal to zero. Now I can make this x one half, x to the power one half as square root of x, but this x to the power minus one half is uh, 1 divided by square root of x, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this term to the right-hand side, simplify these things, right? 2 and 900 cancels out, 450. So 450 divided by square root of x, because this is what x to the power of minus 1 half is, equals, 3's cancel out, um, so square root of x divided by 2. So do the cross product. It means um, 900 equals x square root of x to the square uh, is just x. So that's it. This is the optimal, the monopsonist uh, labor. Um, so how many labor the monopsonist is going to hire? That's it. Well, how do I find the wage? Remember, the first question was, what is x? There you go. Well, what is wage? Well, just use the supply curve, the inverse supply curve. Uh, by the way, if you like, you can put the monopsonist here, all right? So W monopsonist is square root of x divided by three. So square root of 900 is, remember, square root of 900 is nine times 100, square root of nine is three, square root of 100 is 10, so therefore it's 30. Divided by three, so it's $10. So the wage is going to be $10 per worker. Very good. What else? Um, part A and B is, that's it. Part C was asking what is the perfectly competitive market um, uh, uh, labor and an and, and, and output level. Well, for this, I need, so this is part C, I need to find the perfectly competitive, perfectly competitive uh, on both markets all right that's that's I mean case one so the firm is already perfectly competitive in the output market but if the firm is also perfectly competitive in the labor market uh, what would be the optimal X and W uh, the W is the um, the parameter of interest so um, you can do is write down the profit function of this perfectly competitive firm. So it's going to take W, which is we would like to find WC times uh, this is the wage and X is the number of workers the firm is going to choose. So this is a fixed number. We don't know yet. X is a choice variable for the uh, firm. Um, so that's it. That's um, I'm sorry, what is this? This is the cost. Oh. The revenue first, sorry. So the revenue is 10, the price of output, times um, how much output you produce. Well, you still face the same uh, uh, production function, obviously. Uh, minus the W, which we would like to find, times X. So subject to, uh, so we would like to maximize this. Uh, we have y equals f of x, which is equal 90 divided, uh, I'm sorry, times square root of x plus 300, all right? So that's, so the profit function, whenever you see y, just plug this. So it's again 900 square root of x plus 3000 minus wc times x, all right? So that's the, um, that's the, of a perfectly competitive firm's profit function. How is it different than this? So here, 
because the wage function was an upward sloping function rather than a constant number, we had square root of x divided by 3 multiplied by x. Everything else is the same. But that's going to make a big difference. How so? Well, by the way, if you like, you can call this pi competitive, so the competitive firm's uh, profit. So del pi c divided by del x. So I take the first order condition, set it equal to zero and solve for it. So if you take the derivative of this thing, remember uh, it's going to be 450 divided by square root of x, right? Um, the derivative of, that, that's 3000 by the way, sorry, the derivative of 3000 though, just zero, minus wc equals zero. All right, so what I have is 450 divided by square root of x equals wc. Okay, so what happened? Well, I just found the profit maximizing wage for the perfectly competitive uh, firm. But you may wonder, is like, um, well, it's not a number. It, it, it does depend on x, right? The number of um, uh, workers. Yes, that's true. But remember, what we found is basically the marginal revenue equals marginal cost, right? So we know that in a perfectly competitive market, the marginal cost is nothing but the supply curve itself, which is square root of x divided by 3. All right. So therefore, you just use this equality to, to, to find x. Well, what is x? I just do the cross product. So x squared of x times square root of x is just x equals 450 times 3. So 3 times uh, 450, which is uh, 0, 15, uh, 1,350. So this is how much output the competitive firm would like to produce. Just plug that back to this equality to find the wage or just put it into the demand curve and find the wage. Well, how do I do that? I'm sorry, not the demand curve, sorry, the supply curve. Doesn't matter because they both are the same thing. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, sort of plug this into the supply curve to find the wage. So WC equals to square root of X. Square root of uh, 1,350, which is, by the way, 3 times 450, right? I mean, you can just leave it as 1,350 square root divided by 3. All right. But again, if you don't have a calculator, which I don't think you need, what you can do is 1,350 is equal to 3 times 450. Well, I can't take this square root of 450, right? But I know that this is 450 is 9, 45 is 9 times 5. So this is 9 times 5. So now I can take the derivative of 9. So therefore, the square root of 1350 is... 3 times square root of uh, 15 divided by 3. Oops, oh, 150, I'm sorry. So this is 9 times 5 times 10. So therefore, this is the wage level for the competitive firm. So the threes will cancel out. The wage for the competitive firm is square root of uh, 150. Okay, well, I mean, it's not, uh, what is it, I integer, but fine. We can nevertheless find it without a calculator. So graphically, so this is how we solve it uh, uh, mathematically. Graphically, it would be, I mean, sometimes um, looking at graph would give you a better idea of what we are doing or what we should do. Remember, we had the P times MP, right? Um, uh, so it's the, 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 the demand curve, which is, by the way, uh, just 10 times the MP, the marginal productivity. Um, it's not linear though, that's the, that's the only thing. Um, and then we had the, the supply curve, w, uh, Wx, and then uh, because this was monopsonist, we had the Wx times del W del X, uh, no, plus, okay? So if you remember, that was the competitive equilibrium output, competitive equilibrium 
uh, wage level. This was the monopsonist uh, output. I'm sorry, I keep saying output. The input, the number of hires. And then, uh, sorry, not this one. This is the wage for the monopsonist. So what we found, we found these. So this is 900 and the wage is 10. Okay, and then what we should find is the point where the price times marginal productivity, the marginal productivity is, is, is this guy, and the, I mean 45 is divided by square root of x, and then price is 10, so therefore P and P is just 450 divided by square root of x. So once again, this is the f of x, right? So its derivative is, derivative of 300 is zero, so marginal productivity is. Uh, the derivative of this is 90. This is x to the power one half, so half. x to the power mi one, minus one half, so it's 45 divided by square root of x, times the price. So p times mp is 450 divided by square root of x, equals the wage, the supply curve. Wx divided by 3. And so for that reason, I equated this to 450 divided by square root of x to square root of x divided by 3. Don't make this square root business confuse you. All right. Here, what should matter is what we are equating to what. And here, what we are equating is the price times the marginal productivity to the uh, supply curve to find out the optimal competitive equilibrium uh, labor, which is 1,350 higher, and the wage, which is 150. I don't know what 150 is, but this is 100 uh, plus 50, right? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, this is clearly higher than 10, uh, square root of 150. The closest, I think, is 121, like square root of 11. Uh, 169 is a square root of 13. So it's a 144 square root of 12. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, this, the square of 12 is 144. Um, so therefore this is around 12 point something. But all I care is it's higher than the monopolist price. So this is 150 squared, oh, that's it. Okay, so this is why I had to equate these two numbers. I hope that was clear.